Hi everyone, my name is Kristen Van Leuven and today I'm going to show you how to paint this holiday watercolor card. So the first thing you'll need is watercolor paper. I'm using these pre-made watercolor cards by Strathmore. I really like that they come already ready to make cards. The textured side is on the inside, so I just flip that over because I love using the textured side the most. For watercolor, I'm using my Daler Rowney watercolor set. And for this project, the colors I'll be using are Hooker's Green, Indigo, Transparent Turquoise, Alizarin Crimson, and Gold. I'm using a Princeton round size eight brush, water, and paper towel. I'm going to use a few pieces of tape to tape down the card so it doesn't pop open while I'm painting. So I'm going to start by picking up some of the transparent turquoise, and I'm going to mix a medium wash, a pretty good ratio of pigment to water. We're going to start with the middle tree so that it's easier to keep everything evenly spaced. I start with kind of a line for the tip of the tree and then I make these sweeping quick movements to the left. I'm imagining an invisible tree trunk going up the center of the tree and then making those strokes also to the right. So I'm just going back and forth between left strokes and right strokes creating kind of an abstract looking tree. I'm not focused on the details of the branches. It obviously still looks like a tree, but it's very wonky in this stage and it will look better in just a second. So I'm picking up some of that darker indigo color for the contrast in the tree and I'm dropping it in uh, really lightly in certain areas while it's still wet. I kind of want this contrasting color to give me more of the uh, texture and the shape of the branches and I also want it to be the tree trunk. I don't want the tree trunk to be nice and even. I kind of want it to be a little jagged and PC going up the middle of the tree. I think that gives it a nice um, textured look. And then I'm going to just attach some of these strokes that are more textured, swiping from the left to the right in this darker color from the trunk into the rest of the tree. Now we're going to paint the same thing on the left, but with sap green. So we're going to pick up our sap green. And again, we want to do more of a medium tone wash. I don't mind if it mixes a little bit with the transparent turquoise because then it brings a little bit of cohesion to the piece if some of that color is also within that green. And we're going to do that first tip at the top, that little line swiping to the left, swiping to the right imagining our tree trunk coming up the middle. I think the way to make this look aesthetically pleasing but also abstract is to vary the pressure of your brush. So I'm using the body of my brush for some of the strokes but I'm also using the tip of my brush. Sometimes I'm going back into a stroke and fixing um, the edges if it doesn't look quite right. Maybe using the tip to give it more of a branchy feel. For the trunk, I've just picked up more sap green with less water so it gives us a stronger pigment so we can get that nice contrast. For these contrasting textured strokes within the tree, I'm just using the very tip of my brush in very quick movements. So I'm not thinking about it too much, I'm just trying to add detail and contrast in this color. And it just makes the whole thing go from abstract to a pretty cute tree. For our third tree on the right, I'm going to be doing alizarin crimson, but to tie in the colors from before, I'm adding some of that blue wash and the green wash into the mixture. So it's going to give it a nice purpley muted color. I feel like these trees are the perfect example of trusting the process. Um, you know, we're just making these wonky quick shapes with our brush to the left and to the right. But once we add that contrasting color for the trunk and the textural pieces, it turns out really, really great. So as long as you're sticking to the main idea of leaving some white space, having some kind of texture tree shape and keeping it in that classic tree triangle shape, it will turn out great, trust yourself. For the contrasting color for this reddish purple tree, we're going to add a little bit more alizarin crimson to our palette and add more of that blue wash to it as well. 
When I want a stroke to look more organic, like these tree trunks, I use very light pressure and do it as quick as I can. Focus on doing super light pressure and just using the tip of your brush that will also make your strokes look more organic. Now these trees look great, but they need a little pizzazz. So clean your brush really, really well and really scrub into that gold to pick up a very strong amount of pigment. When there's too much water and not enough pigment when you're using gold, the gold will be dull. So it needs to be very, very pigmented with very little water. So for this middle tree, I thought it would be really cute to add a little star. But otherwise, I'm just kind of dotting around on the trees, kind of making little glistening moments or maybe an ornament, something where it looks like the tree is dressed up for the holidays, but I don't want to overwhelm it. From this angle, you can really see how much that gold pops on these trees. It just makes it look really special. So my biggest tip for this is to vary the size of your little bobbles you're creating in this gold and also you can cluster some together. You don't have to make them completely evenly spaced out. We're going to take the tape off and for me what makes a painting into a card is adding a little phrase. So I wrote in cursive in pencil peace on earth at the bottom. I felt like it really fit this style. Thank you so much for being here with me today as we painted this beautiful holiday watercolor card. I hope you learned some techniques you can take into your card making this year, and I will see you next time.